recording okay i just started the cloud recording oh let me mute the chime thing that chimes when people join um and let me start my backup recording this is my backup recording and uh, <laughs> what is it back above it, it records my face uh so most of this of uh, online orientation sessions or virtual class session as you will hear me call it starting next week and on um i the intent of recording uh, is one uh, to share it with the classmates who are not at the session in real time. That is one primary reason. And two, I do want to, um, to the extent they can be reused in future semesters, I want to edit it uh, into snippets that I can include in future semesters material. And when I do that video editing, I found that it's uh, nice to have just a recording of myself all the time. Even if I don't use it all the time, sometimes it's nice to fill in a gap or whatever. And it's uh, hard to get Zoom to record my face all the time. Whenever someone speaks, it'll just switch to their video. And I've tried other recording setups and it never really worked out. The only way I could have, I could uh, reliably and consistently record myself is by having uh, that OBS thing. <laughs> so every virtual class session, you will see me start that recording. Uh, it's my backup recording for my face. So uh, with that, let me, Briefly introduce myself and uh, describe my uh, physical setup here. Uh, so, you know, people who are here in real time, we just, just did the intro. That's what first uh, 10, 12 minutes were for. Um, and to, to just uh, introduce myself briefly, my name is Andrew Park. I'm your instructor for Physics 4B. I taught Physics 4A last semester. So I think about half the class uh, are um, familiar with the things I do. Uh, you were in my physics for a last semester, and the other half are not <laughs> familiar with what I do. Um, welcome, and we'll have a great semester together. Um, so uh, I guess um, I'll, I'll just repeat what I said in the um, intro. I, over the summer, I went to a lot of work conferences, a conference on online teaching in SoCal, and there was a conference for AAPT, American Association of Physics Teachers. It's a national summer meeting that was in Sacramento. I went there for a two-year college day. Um, and I'll do a more uh, of my own introduction when I'm doing a demo of the course as test student. Uh, there's a introductory discussion where I have to contribute something as test student and might as well do a real intro of myself <laughs> so that it, also, it does two things at the same time. Um, so that's my intro. And now description of my setup. So you should be seeing a uh, shared screen here. And, um, and uh, I, I have a uh, two screen setup. Uh, the shared screen that you are seeing is physically placed here. And uh, I have a second screen where I keep all the other screens and menus that I need to manage this Zoom meeting. So, you know, over the years of doing this um, virtual class session, I've trained myself to look at the camera when I talk. So when it looks like I'm looking at you, I'm not looking at you, I'm looking at this uh, camcorder that's serving as my webcam. <laughs> um, so for people who are here in real time, when I am looking at you, is when I'm looking somewhere over here where my uh, second screen is. I keep a bunch of things there. And actually one of the things I keep there is my Zoom chat window. Let me put my, uh, what I'm going to be calling my usual welcome message there. So welcome, uh, thank you so much for joining in this online orientation session. Uh, if you have any quest questions, please, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and ask, or put your question into the chat window. Let me resize the chat window and drag it to the main shared screen. So I'll normally be really careful about dragging this uh, window into the shared screen, because uh, the way I have my Zoom settings set up, my Zoom windows show in my uh, Share the screen. I, I did it deliberately. So I know when my Zoom menu, even those are here, they show on the share the screen. Um, so normally this uh, will live on my second screen that's somewhere over there <laughs> that you don't see as part of share the screen. Um, and uh, I, I monitor it from time to time. And so in this uh, online uh, set setting, I've so I, I, 
I have to explain this a little bit because it is quite uh, contrary to what they teach you uh, when they teach you to teach <laughs> for the first time. Like the one of the very first thing that, that they teach when I was a you know, graduate student and I was going to be a GSI, they make you go through one of these GSI training courses. And one of the very first things they teach is how to make use of silences. Um, so, you know, they teach us basically not to ask rhetorical questions. After asking a question, to wait for a long enough time, wait and sit in the awkward silence long enough until someone feels compelled to say something and that someone, uh, that someone saying something shouldn't be the instructor breaking the silence. And as, as you will see when you come in for in-person lab, uh, I am able to outlast you in that awkward silence. But I learned quickly that in the online setting, it doesn't quite work. And, you know, if you are here in real time, you can actually see I'm the only one with a video on. And, you know, this is not meant as a pressure for other people to turn video on. But what I'm trying to say is the psychology works differently in this online meeting. And, you know, I've been a participant in online meeting time, multitasking and doing other things where there's an awkward silence. I, as a participant, don't feel awkward I'm doing other stuff anyway um, so um, in this online setting I've uh, decided to go with a different convention uh, the convention that's more uh, common in um, in broadcasting world where what they're trying to do is minimize dead air in fact radio stations get fined if uh, they have a significant dead air <laughs> I, I won't get fined but still uh, what I'm gonna try to do is minimize uh, uh, periods of silence. So that's why you will be hearing me speak nonstop um, because the awkward silence doesn't really work in online setting. So I might as well make sure the time is used efficiently by basically saying everything. So um, with that, what I want to make sure people who are here understand is the fact that I'm continuing to speak, uh, never take that as a disinvitation to a question. If uh, I've said something and it didn't make sense, it looks like I'm going to move on, unmute yourself and ask. You have my permission to do that anytime. You have my encouragement to, to do that anytime. And somehow, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can use the chat. And that's what the second part is. Chat is never interrupting, so you can always put something there. And if uh, so, if you send out the chat to everyone after I've started the recording, then it'll go out to everyone. It'll and it'll get captured in the recording. And that's actually why I put this in in there too, so that it gets captured in recording and people who are watching the recording can see it. Uh, somehow, if you have a question that you want you to ask, but you didn't want that question itself to be part of the recording, then. Not right now, because right now you are seeing it. But if you click on, you know, to and uh, select me and send me a private message, then I'll be able to see it and address it. And most of the time, let me move this off to the second screen. Most of the time, that window will just leave in the second screen. And I will be very careful about dragging it into the main share of the screen, especially when there's message from other people there. So, um, so with that, I think that's... Uh, um, all the explanation about um, stuff I do. So let's see. Yeah, and uh, with all these online meetings, I always send out an agen agenda for two reasons. One, to um, inform you of what's going to be covered. And two, uh, to, as an organizing tool for myself so that I don't forget anything important. So uh, we've said hi, a few beginning of semester. Oh, so um, this is the kind of thing that can happen really easily because... Um, the way the setting is set up for recent announcements here, it only displays the most recent announcement. So if this is the first time you are looking at this home page, you might see this and think uh, that the very first announcement. It's not. There was one before that. So if you haven't seen it, please go and make sure you see it. Um, I sent this out before the beginning of semester, and I'm never sure how it gets sent out. Uh, when I post the announcement before the semester even starts. So I also forward this as email. So hopefully you've all seen it. And, you know, if you took Physics 4A with me, then hopefully you've already done all this. But if you haven't, then please uh, make sure uh, to take care of this. One is make sure you are checking your Peralta email regularly or most likely, if you are not uh, using Peralta email as a main email, please forward it. Uh, it's uh, super simple. The instructions are here, but I can also um, also do it. So you know, link on Peralta website, 
So from here, when you uh, log into, so I'm gonna use the student portal. The portal is smart enough to figure out I'm a faculty and redirect to me. So I'm gonna log in, or I'm already logged in, and it just redirected me here. And um, yeah, yeah. In, in, if you haven't already logged in, you might ask you to log in. And after logging in, go to Outlook. And after you go to Outlook, go to um, yeah, it's having the message. Go to wait, not, yeah. Go to settings and search settings for forwarding. And then it'll uh, come up. As you can see, this is how I have my own email set up. It's my personal email. That's actually Gmail. So I have one place where I check, I check all my email. And uh, I really want to make sure that people are reachable by email <laughs> because that's uh, really my uh, first backup method to reach out to you with. Uh, I say backup because uh, the for course-related items, really how I want to be able to uh, reach you is captured here. But somehow, you know, if I don't see you on Canvas, if I have trouble reaching out to you through Canvas, then I'll use email. And if email doesn't work, then I have other things that I can do to follow up with. <laughs> But um, since the email is the kind of the most common, uh, greatest common denominator, I want to make sure that people are reachable by email. One and two. Um, so these are the most common uh, kind of regular ways I'll be communicating with you uh, throughout the course. So I want to make sure that your notification setting is set up properly so that you are receiving messages in the way that I'm assuming you are receiving it. So uh, you can uh, find the notification setting either through this link or you can go through your profile page. Uh, you know, profile picture, click on that, and then notifications. I'm middle clicking so it opens in a separate tab. So here you can either set up an account-wide notification setting or you can set it up for each course. Um, I don't want to overcomplicate it, so I just set it for my entire account. And as you can see here, my bias is for setting it as notify immediately. Um, my philosophy is um, if uh, it, notifications become like a membership update, I don't think I ever gotten that. Then this setting doesn't hurt anything. If any notification ever becomes too frequent and it starts to bug you, then you can turn it down. I've done that with uh, submissions. It used to be notified immediately, then I would get notification for every single submission and that was bugging me. So I turned it down to a daily summary. But I have turned on late grading or late submissions as notified immediately so that I know when people are catching Catching up, I kind of get a sense of, um, uh, you know, who's catching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, you should um, experiment with what setting works for you. But I would, and I would uh, strongly recommend you set these particular settings in the way I recommend, so that course communications reach you in the way that's intended. The first is the announcement. Um, so I've sent uh, two announcements so far, and the one this morning especially. So if you have uh, your notification set up as notify immediately, then you should have gotten it this morning when I sent it. Now, if you didn't set it up that way and you set up daily summary or whatever, so basically you will hear about the agenda for this meeting um, like uh, at 6 or 7 p.m. tonight. <laughs> so I think daily summary is too much of a delay. Now, having said that, I, prob I try not to do anything where you have to respond or react within 24 hours. Uh, because I think I let you know about the disorientation session time with my message on Saturday. So I try really try to avoid where you need to react within 24 hours. Still, daily summary is too much of a delay, so unless setting it this way will cause a significant problem for you, then you do have freedom to turn it down to something. But um, I recommend to notify immediately so that when I send out a announcement, when I post an announcement, it goes out as a class-wide email, basically. Um, that's one. The second setting that I want you to uh, set up as notify immediately is conversations. So this is the Canvas conversations or what I call Canvas conversations tools. It's uh, the thing that says inbox uh, on the sidebar. I call it conversations tool because that's the word Canvas uses. And when you go to the link for inbox, it'll actually say conversations at the top. So um, 
So I like to use Canvas messaging tool as if it's email and that way of using it only works if you set conversation message as notify immediately. Um, the other things you can turn it down or do whatever you want, <laughs> but conversation message, it only works like email if you set it as notify immediately and not anything lower. So I would strongly recommend setting conversation messages, notify immediately. And the third thing that you saw on that announcement is the submission comment. This, I, it took me a, I think it took me a semester to figure out that, um, how submission comments work. So, so the reason I like using Canvas messaging tool is a, it's a way of organizing a communication in a way that's context dependent. Even though I do want everyone to be able to be reachable by email, I'm sure you use email for other things too. And sometimes the things can kind of get buried in your email. And um, the Canvas messaging tool, it's for your courses only. Uh, for me, it's for the courses I teach only. So there's a kind of clear cut thing there. In a similar way, I like to use submission comments as a way to associate what I'm writing to you with the assignment that it's associated with. So instead of starting up a new Canvas message, I would uh, uh, attend, um, post it as a comment to a submission that you made. Or for in case of peer review, um, to a submission that you didn't make. But the submission comment still works as long as it's an assignment. So, um, so I like to post the things there for either uh, just highlighting things I've seen as I grade or uh, as a way to let you know something that you might need to change um, so that um, you are on track for the class. And um, on that submission comment, unless you have this notification set to some level, you won't be getting the notification that there's a comment. Uh, you, you can also access the comments through Gradebook, but um, if your notifications are turned off, then you wouldn't even know that there's something for you to look at. So I would like to recommend that you set it as notify immediately, but you know, if you want, need to, to turn it down, you can turn it down, but um, you probably want to hear what I would like you to fix <laughs> um, so that you don't uh, continue to do the thing that I don't want you to do. Um, so those are the three things that I pointed out in the message. There's one last thing that I am recommending people to set as notify immediately. That's for discussions. Um, especially for new topic. I think this is something relatively new. They're splitting out replies from topic because uh, replies can kind of, uh, it can get really um, uh, busy if you, because uh, um, we have graded the discussions weekly. And if this is turned on, which mine is, uh, you will get notification every time someone replies to a discussion that you've replied to. And I get that that can be a lot, especially if you're taking multiple online classes. But especially new topic, that's, uh, um, so I use discussions in two ways. Uh, one, the main way that you will see after this orientation session, recordings of sessions like this, it will get posted to discussion. And I'll highlight that at the first, or first virtual class session. And the second way I uh, use discussion is when you go to the discussion, you will find that uh, you can create your own topic. Um, the this plus discussion button, it's available for everyone. I think I can probably create it as test to student, maybe. Yeah, I can create it as test to student. Um, so so it, I want you to have it available as a way to communicate with the cl your classmates, you know, in a way that everyone will see it. <laughs> um, and, uh, and in order for this to work, people need to be notified when there is a, um, there's a post. So, um, so as a way to encourage you to set new topic as some sort of notification, I am uh, making a commitment that anytime there's a class related recording, it'll be posted to discussion. And this first and maybe early next week, I'll still make an extra announcement telling you that there's a recording available. But I'm going to stop doing that after the first couple of weeks. So for you to continue to receive notification, you need to set this notification setting um, at some level. So, so that's uh, the, the couple important things I pointed out in this announcement. Make sure I'm, you are reachable by email and make sure you are reachable in a more regular way through uh, Canvas's method of uh, um, being reached. <laughs> so, um, so, 
So yeah, I wanted to make sure while I have your attention and time here, point those out. Um, that yeah, beginning of semester notes, lines of communication. And the remaining 30 minutes or so, I wanted to just uh, go through the course demo um, as a test student and also address a question about the, the, the in-person check-in thing. It'll come up on one of the pages as I go through as a test student. So I'll address it then. So um, I'm going to go into test student mode. I have deliberately not done anything as a test student so that I can uh, go through the course and kind of point out some of the, um, some of the, um, uh, how do you call it, uh, idiosyncratic things that I do in my class. Um, so, um, or, you know, so if you took Physics 4A with me, then some of, most of these you're super familiar with. Um, it, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, let me do that. So in this test to student view, I want to point out one thing first. So it's the thing that I have seen people make use of, and it's one of the Canvas features that if I could turn it off, I would turn it off. Uh, as you can see, in the sidebar, there's a lot of things you might be used to th seeing, things like assignments and quizzes. It's not there because I turned it off. You don't have direct link to it. Um, and this one feature that I can't turn off, so the only thing I can do is warn you at this meeting, is the to-do bar. Uh, it leads to so much confusion that I would turn it off if I could, but I can't, so it's there. The kind of confusion I'm referring to is something like this. When people look at the to-do bar and uh, you see like this, oh, so I need to do this. Let me click on it and, um, and try to do it. And then you will see a screen like this. And I get questions like, oh, professor, could you please unlock this? There's nothing I can do to unlock it for you because uh, it hasn't been unlocked yet, not by me, but not by you. It hasn't uh, been unlocked yet by you. So the, when you slow down and read the message carefully, it does describe what you need to do to unlock this item and actually work on it. But all of this, I think, is unnecessary confusion. It comes from the fact that I cannot disable the to-do bar. Uh, there's maybe one thing the to-do bar is good for. It's for tracking the announcements because this bar only shows the very last last announcement. But in the to-do, you can see, oh, there's that announcement on September 9th. There's this announcement on September 11th. So, you know, if you want to use that as a way to track announcements and each time you've read it, you click X so that you mark it for yourself. That's great. Um, I have no problem with that. But for any other way of you might be using it, like using these links, it gives you access to links that don't work anyway. Um, so I think it's confusing. I wish I could disable it, but I can't, so it's there. All I can tell you is just don't use it. And here's the final reason why I don't like the to-do bar, because I'm not in test to student view most of the time. I'm in instructor view. And in instructor view, I see the items for me to do. So oftentimes I forget what's visible on your to-do bar. So it's the kind of thing where, because I don't see it, I don't often, I don't have an idea. And even if I could get an idea as test to start, I don't bother to because it's, it's, I got other things to do. So the way you should access and use this course is, you know, read the page. And it says, please click on start here button to get started. So, you know, start that way. And it also says this course is best viewed through modules. So, you know, try that. So let me do start with the start here. So that's how you should start. Now, uh, most of you will have seen this page before, um, especially if you took Physics 4A with me, because this is the exact way I formatted it. Also, a great chunk of this is from a template that they have for Peralta. So, um, and this is the description of the module requirement. Um, I'm going to click next to go and let me see here. Now for most of the module requirement, you'll be able to do what I'm doing, like not read through, just to click next to through. Now I don't recommend that you do that because, um, you know, all the pages that are on the course site, they are there because it's a material I want you to know, I want you to be familiar with. It's, uh, I guess a matter of, um, how much do I want to insist on that that you actually you know read through it and uh, see it and it um, so where I am um, is 
so if we are doing what I'm currently doing, at some point you will get stopped because um, so yeah here you know, now I'm getting still locked. <laughs> so let me go back. And uh, let me actually uh, show you in modules view what the module requirements look like. So um, on, in the modules view, which is the recommended view for the course, you see the um, you see the entire um, course layout laid out. In fact, you can see everything, even the things that haven't been unlocked and the things that you probably won't be seeing for you know the whole semester. They're all there, and this semester I actually updated all of them, so all the dates should be correct. And um, there are some um, timed assessments that I still need to program questions into, but. I'll get there before you get there. So here you can see um, the items that I was able to just click through, they have view requirement. And when you look through Canvas module items, you will see that view requirement is the most common requirement. And all that means is it means that your web browser has loaded a page. I haven't done anything to ensure that you have read it. I, you are adults, or even if you are not, you are treated like adults. <laughs> so I leave it up to you to um, handle that and um, be responsible for reading through that. Some items have additional requirements because the nature of item um, requires that. Uh, honor code pledge and the introduction are uh, the early two of those. So let me do those. The honor code pledge, um, this is really my main way of making sure that people know what the expectations for this class is. And this pledge takes a particular form and that's why it has this core requirement. Let me go through that, do it properly, and, um, and then um, and I'll do the rest. So this is another code pledge. There was a page on online course on code, and as you've seen me do, people can just click through it without reading any of it. And when I thought through uh, how to make sure people read it, um, I didn't like asking questions because, um, you know, as I say, which ironically is easier to do if you're willing to violate the honor code and just to, you know, look up the stuff and uh, maybe not without ever kind of um, digesting it. So. I thought what would work best is make you type the core portion of the honor code. Uh, that way I have some idea that people, this uh, this block of text uh, made it through your brain somehow. So uh, so that's uh, what what I'm asking you to do now. The co most common way people do this wrong, they will just uh, type in their name. And um, that's not what the instruction is. Please read the instruction. That's actually one of the reasons for this. Because uh, sometimes it can be indistinguishable between when people didn't read the instruction versus when people cheated and intended to cheat. And I want to make sure that um, that distinction, that kind of fuzzy line doesn't exist. That you know you should be reading instructions. And um, what, uh, what people might say, oh, I didn't realize that was the case. I want you to remove that excuse as much as possible. So let me do this properly the way it should be done as test student. So the way it should be done, I test student will, and I'm just going to type out this block of text. And I do mean you should not be copying and pasting it. If you do it, I will zero out the score and send you back. I have to do that every semester to at least one person. And I will highlight a little more at the Tuesday's lab session exactly what it is I do that enables me to see who copied and pasted. Um, make submissions that represent my own work, not share my own work and solutions with anyone else. All right, explicitly a lot, not engaging in plagiarism, not use outside resources during open book timed assessment, and not engaging in any other activities that dishonestly improve my results or dishonestly damage or improve the results of others. And in past semesters, I had the people who um, copied and pasted and waited a like, couple minutes as though they thought I was uh, detecting copying and pasting by timing. I don't, because of the timing for the typing, it varies quite a bit. So I know when I focus and do it, I can do it in like a minute and a half. I'm a pretty fast typist. Last I checked, 95th percentile. Um, <laughs> um, and some people are slower. I, when people do it on phone while I watched, I've 
seen it take like nine minutes. So I don't do it by timing. I have other methods that I will reveal on Tuesday uh, during the lab session. I'm not willing to show it as part of the recording, but I'll show it in the in-person class session. So this gets manually graded. So um, I'll you know look through it and grade it eventually. Uh, for your module progress, it's this question. That will give you the automatic two points as long as you answer it right. And then um, you can move on while uh, it takes me a while to grade your question one response. So uh, with that, I'm going to go to my uh, next item that I can finally unlock and respond. So this will be my proper introduction. Um, and um, yeah. And I'm going to be try to be careful not to show people's names because uh, when I edit the video, I have to, oh wait, yeah, right now it's fine because I, so, um, so I'll reply and then uh, after I reply, it'll show the six people who've uh, replied to their post that I'll be careful in uh, minimizing showing of their name on the screen because when I edit the video, I have to blur those out and it's more work. So I'll reply and I'm going to reply as myself, Andrew Park, not test to student. So let me see. Um, hi, uh, my name is Andrew Park, your instructor. Uh, whenever you see test uh, in these graded discussions, it's me, your instructor, clearing the module requirement for the test student. Uh, in fact, the contribute module requirement, it's one of the most stringent requirement. There's, I have a super user access as an instructor, and even then, this is basically the only way I can clear it. I actually have to post-test test the student. So, um, um, so I gave my name, uh, uh, your instructor, and I prefer to go by Andrew. Um, why you are taking this class? Um, I am teaching this class, uh, not taking it. Um, uh, what do I say about it? And, and I, um, I'm teaching it because I have to. Um, just kidding. I actually don't have to. I have enough bank to leave that I couldn't you know, get by not teaching this class. But I do love teaching this class. And I'll tell you what I most uh, uh, I'm by taking it and I will share what I uh, what my favorite thing about teaching physics 4b is um, physics 4b is the class that covers electromagnetism what I would like to call the first complete uh, physical theory uh, a lot of people count to the gravity Newton's law of universal gravitation is the first theory I feel like it's a, such a simple theory that it shouldn't count um, electromagnetism when we get to the end of the semester there are four Maxwell's equations it's a kind of the um, thing that sets the theme of unification the first uh, complete physical theory, which is set uh, up the theme of uh, unification that uh, physicists uh, have been on ever since, ever since the late 19th century. Um, so I feel like uh, physics for that electromagnetism that we cover in physics for b it's that quintessential um, uh, illustration of what physics is about. Um, so that's uh, my second question. Choose one or more following questions to answer. Uh, uh, I'll, I, I think when I wrote this question, the superconductor thing was on the news for a bit, but I think that's not anymore. So I don't really want to write about that. I'll say, uh, my home campus is the COA. <laughs> it's a college of Alameda. I'm the full-timer here, although I could teach at other Peralta colleges, but I love teaching at COA. I don't want to teach at other places. Okay, so with that, uh, I'll... Oh, I guess I didn't do my other intros. Um, uh, the other bit of intro that I implied I would do at the beginning of the online orientation session. Um, I have been teaching physics at COA since fall 2014, almost 10 years. 
And the first time I taught physics anywhere as a TA at UC Berkeley um, was in 2006, uh, spring 2006. Um, very soon I can tell you, I tell people in my class that I've been teaching physics longer than you've been alive. And I don't think I'm quite there yet unless I have a high school student in this class, but I'll be there soon. <laughs> Uh, I, I uh, love teaching physics, and I uh, love answering physics questions, which is why I do what I do. Um, yeah, let me just uh, do that. And then uh, other people's replies, yeah, it, it, there's no way for me to entirely hide that. I'll just blur those out later. Um, so, so with this posted, now most of the graded dis discussions you will see won't have the typical requirements you might have seen in other classes where the instructor tells you post the ones by this date and then reply to another classmate by this date. I don't do that because I found those annoying. There's just the one discussion where I tell you to do that. So do that there and don't worry about other discussions. You are welcome to read other people's responses and uh, reply. You are welcome to interact about the Interaction is not required. So uh, now I can move on to the my first week's module. Oh, and uh, before I go too far, let me actually track back a little bit because I think this is the place where um, people have seen that um, the thing that I've changed this semester. And I think I've already uh, told the people at the end of Physics 4A that I intend to do this. So hopefully this is not a surprise. Um, and this is uh, written into the Physics of 4B grading standards page, which I renamed. It used to be called the grading contract. And a lot of this is the same thing you've seen before. For those of you who are in my Physics 4A, uh, what has changed is um, uh, two things, actually. So, the, so this additional step... Um, the check-in meeting is just uh, uh, there as a kind of required thing. We have to hold a check-in meeting. <laughs> it's uh, required. <laughs> and I'll uh, give you a little bit of a nuance in a bit. And the, the second thing that we are doing differently, I, so another physics instructor do this. They presented at um, AAPT meeting, and I wanted to just give it a try. So. Uh, at our first lab meeting, we are going to go through some goal setting exercise and you will set your own goals and then um, uh, when the time comes for evaluation, you will ref refer to that as you evaluate yourself and you will have a chance to revise your goals as well. Um, and uh, it's something new I'm doing, so I'm a little bit chicken about it. The professor who was using this, he actually uh, set a standards for A, B, and C according to those goals. A is when people met all their goals, B is when people met uh, most of their goals, and, and so on. And I was a little bit too afraid to do it, so I'm not doing that. I am still holding to my own standards for A, B, uh, my own standards for A, B, C uh, according to understanding. But uh, I do want to see how um, setting your own goals might be beneficial for you for your own learning. And um, now the description of the check-in meeting, I believe it's a little bit hard to access as test to student. So I might have to, um, yeah, so I'll have to kind of uh, jump out of the test to student mode and I'll jump ahead about six weeks uh, when this item will come up. So um, in about six weeks, I think uh, I did, didn't put this right after thermodynamics because I felt like three weeks wasn't enough. So I put this right after the first uh, electrostatics uh, timed assessment. And it might be in week seven. Ah, here it is. So this is the first time you'll do the uh, grade submission, the self-evaluation. Uh, um, for those of you who are in my Physics 4A, you've seen this. Um, nothing's really changed here. It's all there. Um, basically the same thing. Um, now what's new is the one-on-one -on -one meeting. And uh, last semester I did it in a way where I call it as needed. And I found that um, to be unproductive in a couple different ways. Sometimes people will be unnecessarily uh, nervous when there there wasn't needed to be just because I called the meeting one, two. Uh, I've seen some people basically. I think they were doing this uh, strategically. They were basically avoiding me the whole semester, and um, and I felt like some people I ended up giving a B or 
Maybe not A, it, but definitely giving B to that. I simply didn't have enough information. You might have earned that B, you might not have. And I, I, so I didn't really want to be in that situation. So I'm requiring this one-on-one -on -one meeting. And um, you'll, I think a lot of this will kind of not be all the surprising people who are in uh, my physics 4A. And um, this is relatively done flexibly. So I'm putting the burden on you to schedule the meeting. And you can do it anytime. Um, let's see the task. You can so you can do it any time from the time when you see this note, which is like week eight, week six, week seven. Um, this is uh, I think a parallel with week seven. Yeah. So from the first time you see this, uh, at least once, and somehow if we feel like at the end of that meeting, if we feel like we need more meetings, I'll tell you. Um, it's, and at that end of the meeting, you should have some idea of what grade uh, for the class you are on track for. So. Um, so to schedule and hold this meeting, you should uh, reach out to me and um, you know set up the time after week seven, <laughs> and uh, and and um, I guess uh, as we go towards the end of the semester, for people who haven't done it, I'll give you some reminders. And my recommendation really is, especially if you are nervous about this meeting, do it as quickly as possible. That way, uh, so I keep telling, saying that we can do this more than once. And that more than once, you, you really have that opportunity truly if you hold the first meeting early on. Like if the first meeting you hold is in the last week of the semester, the 14th week, then I might be willing to hold it more than once. But if there isn't enough time remaining in the semester, then nothing's really going to change. But if you did it this in seventh week and there were some things that came up that you weren't doing well, then I'm happy to tell you and you have a lot of time to uh, fix and adjust and correct. So, um, and there are some um, notes here that trying to anticipate some things. And uh, one thing that I will highlight, just because uh, this might make some people nervous, you know, I've seen people who just want to pass the class with us, see, and I have nothing against you. <laughs> and uh, if uh, that's all you want to do, and uh, you don't want uh, that uh, nerve wracking one on one meeting, it, yeah, you don't have to hold this meeting. This is really a requirement for getting on A or B. Uh, I'm happy to pass. I'm happy to give C to someone who have put in the effort and done the minimum things that you have to do in the class. Like I, I'm not gonna withhold that. So, uh, so this is coming up. You will see. You all have access to this page properly in week seven. Take a look at it. Then do it alongside your self evaluation. Um, by which time you have some enough idea of how well you've done in the course. So I think I have enough time to demonstrate a couple more things that are new this semester, especially for people who are, again, who have taken my physics foray. Those are uh, written into, um, written into the, the week one material. So let me at least get through to here. Um, so um, so this page has a mark as done requirement, and this requirement is set uh, on pages that have significant physics content. So this is the very first one of those, and you will see those on other uh, chapter reading and lectures. Um, and in some sense, this is not that significant of a requirement because all it is a click. It's a toggle button, by the way. You can click and unclick. Um, but it, it works as, a, I hope, a, an accountability device for you. Uh, you check for yourself when you are ready to move on. And, it, you know, sometimes people want to check it and move on so that you can see what's next. And then if you want to come back, uncheck it until you have a, a sufficient time to work through it. That's totally fine. You have that control. So I'm going to go next. And this is the discussion that uh, that's new. Uh, it's about you know generative AI. Uh, if you are in my physics for a, you've seen me use that with uh, uh, some of the conceptual questions. And uh, I've gotten, I've learned about a perplexity, which actually works a lot better because it has access to internet and all that stuff. I actually got a, a premium account for it so that I can use this copilot mode a lot more. Um, so. Um, so, you know, use of generative AI, if you are using it as a cheating tool, you shouldn't use it, not because generative AI is bad, but because cheating is bad. <laughs> so you shouldn't use it to cheat. Uh, at the same time, if you are using it to learn, I believe you should be able to use it to learn. So 
Um, so you are allowed to use them as long as you follow the ethical guidelines. Within the syllabus, there is a, a syllabus item for ethical use of AI, which, sorry, uh, the page hasn't fully loaded. Syllabus. Um, there is a class for ethical use of AI and, um, and, um, and that's there. Um, so, um, so the, the discussion topic is related to the first one. It helps you cite your sources. So this discussion will remain available after you've done. And yeah, I have to refresh this page because Canvas does this thing from time to time. It doesn't load all the um, JavaScript things. <laughs> so okay, now I can reply. So let me just follow instructions here to clear module requirements for test the student. So I'm going to use a perplexity because that's where I have paid account. It's going to get more quality response. Uh, let me get a question from chapter two. And I'll just get a conceptual question from here. Oh, I wonder if there's a free expansion thing. Um, uh, maybe not. Um, OK, I'll do this. It, there's an answer key there, too. But um, so let me ask this question. So I'm asking perplexity, which is based on GPT. Uh, the version I'm using will be GPT-4 based. And uh, mark each statement as, yeah. And then it'll answer A, B, C, D, I think. It's been doing really well with the physics 4A. It's uh, gotten questions that I've seen chat GPT means. So uh, RMS is piece of atoms in two gases with the same temperature. Yes, they should so this be true. Um, are they both monatomic or, yeah, both monatomic, so true. Internal, true. Um, oh, wait, RMS speeds, they should be different. So, sorry, false, true. <laughs> and then C is true. D is true. So only A, false. Hopefully, let's see. <laughs> So false, yeah, there's a mass there because one is heavier mass than the other. So it's given the same temperature and same energy, it'll be different. Um, this is, yeah, true. Average kinetic, two guesses are the same. Internal, uh, one more. Why impossible to determine? Um, yeah, yeah, however, for ideal guesses, yeah. So if they were assumed to be ideal, for noble guesses, that's a really good approximation. So for I, under the ideal guess approximation, it'll be true. D, the pressures in two cylinders are the same. Under the ideal guess approximation, oh, wait, wait, wait. Did it, it give you one cylinder the same? Oh, oh, I was wrong. Yeah, that should be impossible to determine because uh, you don't know uh, how many moles of gas there is. <laughs> so impossible to determine is right because uh, you don't know how much, uh, yeah, number of moles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it got all the answers right. So let me just uh, 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 paste uh, this in here. So I'm just going to, uh, this is the you know, me following the instructions. And um, so uh, when you are making your first post, uh, I'm just doing Control V for pasting the screenshots. And to get, get the screenshot, I'm doing Windows Shift S. That's how you get screenshots in Windows, both 10 and 11. Um, and um, my instruction is for you to come back and um, re uh, comment on one of the uh, your classmates. And at some point, I will go through the whole thing and make sure everyone who uh, posted something on time gets a response. Um, it, it's going to take a lot of time from me, but I, that's my penance for making you reply to your classmates. So, okay, so that's the instruction for this. That's done. So this is one thing that's new that uh, I haven't done in previous semesters that I'm doing this semester. And um, uh, I almost, well, I am out of time. Let me see uh, what else I can point out. Uh, so this is, is something that I'm, same thing that I've done in the past semesters, lecture reflection, where my goal is to um, to make sure that you are uh, watching the lecture videos, because <laughs> uh, I want you to watch the lecture videos. So um, I used to put it as part of the problem set assessment. 
I've separated it out, you're going to see it as a graded discussion. Uh, you can just answer this the way you've been answering question two of the problem set assessment. It'll be, you know, it's even the same set of uh, instructions. So you can um, do that. We'll start doing that in week two. Uh, you won't see that in week one. I thought I was having you do a lot in week one, especially given that I'm making you take this survey. This is something new. It's a survey I've seen over the summer and I just uh, want you to see uh, how this uh, looks like. Um, so I'm making you do this first week, so I didn't have you do some of the other things that uh, are there in the first week. Uh, let me just uh, wrap up with one thing that I almost forgot. Well, two things actually. <clears throat> first is the reminder of Tuesday's, tomorrow's in-person lab session. Yes, we are meeting. And two, especially for people who are new, Please note that we are at 860 Atlantic Avenue. We are not on the main campus. We are a couple blocks from the main campus. So please make sure that you know where to find us. There's plenty of parking space outside if you drive. Uh, if you don't drive, then you know it's still in Alameda. So <laughs> it's kind of safe way you get to Alameda main campus. The bus stops are the same. Um, that's one. So please be. I plan to be here tomorrow, and if you can't be here tomorrow, let me know so that I don't drop you. Um, and two, scheduling of virtual class sessions. I do this every semester, so let me actually publish the quiz and um, publish this quiz and just get some sort of input before I schedule a time for regular time. So, you know, Monday 4 p.m., this is probably not going to be the regular time unless this is the most popular time. Uh, but please respond to, the, to this survey so that I can get a sense of when I should schedule the virtual class session. And I want to also hold a um, kind of in-person study hall, uh, like an office hour, but Maybe. I'll talk about them more in the Tuesday's lab session. So um, if you want to, you can access the survey right now, now that I've published it under the to-do bar, but I don't want to send any mixed message about whether you should use to-do bar or not. My unequivocal answer is you shouldn't use it. So I'll put a link to this in um, when I post the recording of this session so that people have a way of getting this link without going through the to-do bar that I don't want you to use. So I think that's uh, everything that we have time for. If there are any questions from people who are here in real time, again, thank you for joining in real time. Uh, if there aren't any questions, I'm going to stop the recording and I will stay online a little bit in case there are questions from, again, people who are here in real time who didn't want to ask questions on the recording. So uh, let me start the recording saying goodbye to people joining by recording the video and I'll stay online a little bit after that. So bye to people joining by recording the video. Recording stopped. Um, let me stop my backup recording. Oh, and I